Good evening, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. And uh, I guess you all know why we're here. We're here about the uh, the upzoning project. And uh, before we start, I just got to go through a litany of things just for our own protection. Are there any uh, elected? Are there any elected officials in the house? Any representative elected officials? Any staffers of elected officials? Anybody that works for city agency or elected official? Any members of the press? Official members of the press? Any Confederates or spies that will be uh, reporting to the elected officials and the city agencies and disseminating false information through snippets on Twitter and other social media? And I guess we got one right there. But anyway. And where's the other one? There he goes, there's the other one right there. Right, so just be careful. Now, I, I tell you this, I guess they don't be want mindful to. of your words. Innocent words are often twisted. They're taking out of context. Then they're put on social media to paint a picture that is not the reality. Yeah, that's him. So please be mindful that's of the guy with the camera. Okay? That's that's the deal. Now, we're here as the Community Coalition, Coalition for Common Sense. And unlike the the uh, the Brock Coalition against upzoning, we are not restricted by the Johnson Amendment as they are a 501c3. We can travel in lanes if they cannot travel. But because we can travel those lanes, we have to be responsible and to be and respectful. Now, we have to remember how many people were at the Ice House for the last day? Was a lot of people there. All right, I'll just give a quick synopsis of what went on. The Ice House, I mean, we basically, it's been established that there is a war on low density throughout the nation. That's a common thing. There is a war. But one thing you got to keep in mind, within a war, even though it's a nationwide war, and actually a statewide and citywide war, within a war there are battles that can be won. So because there's a widespread war, don't think that battles can't be won. They can be won. And we've done our analytics on this, and I'm going to be truthful with you. This can be won. This is a battle that can be won. But it cannot be won without a army. You need an army, and the army is the community. It's every one of you going out there, telling your neighbor what has to be done in order to beat this. We know why we're here, and we know there's a war going. Okay? And just to iterate what I said last time, I mean, you've seen it at the governor level with, with, with Governor Hoffman. You're seeing it at the senatorial level with Senator Biagi, the congressional level with, 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 with Alessandra Ocasio-Cortez, the city council with sponsorship from Open New York. So you have four tiers of government right there that kind of have said, we don't like low density zoning. I mean, they come out and said it, the bottom line is that they don't like it. And we have a protected low density growth management area. And it should be pointed out and really hammered home that this is a what issue? A what issue? What? We want to protect our low density zoning. This is not a who issue about who comes into the community if they do develop as of right. This is never a who issue. It has never been a who issue. And when it's painted that way, it really disturbs me. Because that's not my thing. I don't roll like that. I would not be affiliated with anything that was racist or anything discriminatory. That's not me. And Michael could attest to that. He knows me. We've had many conversations. And he could attest that I do not fit that mold. And if he doesn't, then he's being disingenuous. Now, going forward, we have to look at where we are right now. All right? 
We're going to take this incrementally because the bottom line is it's stages and we're going to work in stages. Right now, we're at the community board level. Last night, Housing and Zoning Committee voted 11-0 with one recusal against the upvote. So in committee, it was basically a, a unanimous vote because the recusal, it was due to a conflict of interest. And that was actually a very noble thing. The gentleman that has an interest announced that very early in the game and that was, that was the proper thing to do. So I actually applaud him for that. So it was voted 11-0. Now, May 19th, that is the big community board vote. That is when the full board will vote on this. There will be an opportunity for everybody to voice their opinion, time permitting. Time permitting is the key word. It's going to be, you register as you come in, first come, first serve. You're going to be signing a sheet. This is what I was told. That's the information I was given. So you get there early. You're first on the list, you get there late, you're last on the list. So it's up to you to get there early if you want to voice your opinion. Okay? Now, going forward, we got to look at how do we stop this? How is it stoppable? We know the developers aren't walking. That's clear. I mean, it's a made clear. The developers aren't really even talking. So, there is a way that this can be stopped, and that's through our council person. Our council person can, with the help of the college, get together and just make this thing go right away. She can ask for deference from her colleagues, meaning that this is my district, this is what my community wants, they don't want this. I'm asking all my members to come on my side and vote with me against this proposal. It is a long-standing tradition that's been time on it for decades and decades and decades. So the bottom line is if she wants this defeated, she has the magic wand to make it go away. Like a magician. She could get her colleagues and they will side with her and it goes away. That is how it goes away. Now, this is very important. This is a big, big issue in our community. Because this, through, because of policies, because of other things known like as far as as of right building, contextual zoning, this is going to spread. If you think it's just going to stay in that little contained area, you're, you're being mistaken. There's been a couple of words said at the city planning hearing that we heard. And the bottom line is, it's not pretty what's looking for the rest of the low density communities. The game plan is, in the long term, eradication of low density zoning. That is the game plan. There is no other game plan. If you think there is, you're mistaken. If you think because you live in Country Club, Locust Point, Spencer Estate, anywhere. If you think you are immune from this, you are not. Believe me when I tell you. And if you live on the water, they are coming for you. I'm telling you that now. That is the prize. The water property is the prize. It always, yep. it's always was. It's not changing. Look at what they did on Shore Drive. Everybody said, oh, they could never do that. Next thing you know, what's there? Boom. Very populated there now. We're, we're, we're jumping ahead of you. Okay? We're not taking questions right now. I'll be happy to speak to you afterwards. Okay? I'll, be answer, I'll answer any question, honestly. Now, so we, we look at where we are. Now, this has to be, this is how I look at it. This is what the community's got to make. This has to be either a win-win situation where we come out ahead and, you know, by extension, the councilwoman comes out ahead. Or it's got to be a lose-lose. We lose, she loses her job. Plain and simple. And I'm not putting it any other way. Her ass is out of her seat. Plain and simple. That is the message. She will not be sitting there in 2023. And this got to be taken seriously. 
People don't want to hurt feelings, and that's been a big problem with this with this community. People are afraid of hurting feelings. Well, you know what? My feelings are hurt when they want to take away my home, when they want to change my community. Now you're hurting my feelings. Okay? So you know what? The bottom line is, I don't want to see it that way. I don't want it to get nasty. But if it's got to get nasty, let me tell you something. I will fight to the death to make sure she is not in her seat. Same I'm here. telling you that right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, same here. I am telling you. And you can give her that message, Michael. You can relay it to her. You can hand deliver it. I'll sign a letter of pledge. I will fight to my death to make sure she is not in office in 2023. Same here. I am not making a damn threat. That is a damn promise. Because I am not having someone come in here lie to our community back in October, and then change her tune. That's right. You want to dance? We're going to dance. That's not a problem. All right? So bottom line is, we're picking the music, not you. Forget the calls. Too late for calls. Too late for calls. The bottom line is, she is going to lose her job. Phone calls are not getting answered. They go to answering machines. The bottom line is, we lose, she loses, and that's it. It's either going to be a win-win or a lose-lose. There's no middle ground. And everybody better start getting serious. Because if they don't get serious, we're going to lose. And I don't like to lose. I can tell you that right now. So, I'd like to bring up a good friend of mine. He's in the back there with Ty John. Come on up, John's gonna say a few words to you guys. And I really thank you guys for coming out here. There's a petition going around. You've got to sign a petition. The petition, if anybody didn't sign it, please sign the petition. Uh and anything that you can do as far as right now is right now we're asking the 19th to show up in the and John's going to touch on that a little bit more. And I thank you all for your indulgence. And remember, this is it. A lose lose. That's the way it's got to be. There's no middle ground here. We don't win, she don't win. That's the bottom line. And that's it. And I'm not afraid to say it. We got, we got your back. Hey guys, so thank you for coming out. I know we're asking you to keep coming out, but it's important to continue to spread the word to your family, your friends. Anybody who loves this neighborhood needs to come out and support this neighborhood. You know, somebody said, who said, who said we got to call the councilwoman? Did you say that? Somebody said, did you call her? All right, so we called the councilwoman, and you know what she's going to ask you? If you're lucky enough that she picked up the phone, or if she has one of, her, one of our assistants ask you, tell me what you want in that spot where the buildings are. What do we want? We want what's allowed by the zone. That's what your answer is. We don't have to give them an answer that we want anything but what's allowed by the zone. Because we're not, it's not our responsibility to make these greedy developers richer. All right, these people need to figure out what to do within the law. So if they can build 30, 40 houses there, like they did on the Indian Museum property, hey, nobody liked that. You know, we, we got, we got a, a whole new community of houses. We weren't too happy, but think about the other consequence if we had had a building there. So I'll take 30, 40 houses any day over buildings where there's gonna be three, 4,000 new residents coming in and crushing our infrastructure. During Ida, we all got affected. If you didn't get affected, one of your friends and neighbors got affected, right? We all had flooding. I had two feet of water in my basement. This community can't even handle the housing we have already with the infrastructure. Our police department is low. Our schools are crowded. Our fire department, we only have one fire department that has a ladder. You know, these buildings are going to be eight stories tall. You know, and, and who knows if that's where it's going to stop. You see what they're doing at 3250 Westchester Avenue? They're trying to build a 17-story building. When is it going to stop? And do you know what's going to happen if this passes? It's going to continue to domino. Now, they're trying to tell us we don't have enough affordable housing. We all know that's bull. Because why in the world is this community being invaded with laundromats? We have laundromats popping up everywhere. Dude, how many, by a show of hands, how many people in this, right here own a house? How many people own a house? 
do you guys keep your hands up if you have a washing machine and a dryer? Yeah, so do you use those laundromats? No. no. So who's using the laundromats? All the people that, that they're saying we need affordable housing. We have affordable housing. People live here. And you know what? If people want to come in and live here, we don't stop anybody. We don't stop anybody. Come, no matter what religion, no matter what race, no matter what gender. Come live here. We'll accept you. Come rent an apartment. Come buy a house. It has nothing to do with any of that. So don't tell us we need affordable housing. We already have our houses, and we earn them. We pay for them. We, we, we go to work every day. We pay our taxes. You know, our taxes are going up every day. Our water and sewer are going up every day. Now, they, now they're going to add this, and they're trying to give us lies that our real estate tax, our, our real estate values are going to go up. Yeah. 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 How, how in the world, if, they, if there was a building eight stories tall right next door to Louis and Ernie's, Louis and Ernie's, he's not going to get more money for his property. He's going to get less money. So when they spin lies like this, it's just, it's, it's horrible that it's deceitful from these greedy developers. So, uh, you know, please continue to spread the, the word. We need you guys to come out. May 19th, it's so important. Please, we can't have a crowd like this. I need you to spread the word. We just mailed out thousands of letters. If you get one and you know about it, give it to your neighbor. We need them to come out. Um, George, is there anything else? I mean, maybe, God, I, I could go on forever. Stop I'm shopping going. there. Stop, Stop shopping there, there. yes. Yeah. Stop, yeah. Shopping. Stop shopping there. Stop shopping there. And donate $100. Oh, by the way, if you guys want bread, there's a new bakery that's opening up on Tremont. Yes, Nestor's Nestor's bakery. Nestor, good guy, good work, man. Nestor's Bakery has the baker from yes. Food Town. Food so, Town's bread, go to Nestor's. All right? Uh, yeah, so... so Guys, on, on the on the posters, there's the website. If you haven't signed the petition, go to the website, sign the petition. When you sign it, it goes simultaneously to all 51 council members. It goes to the it goes to Benedetto's office. It goes to all the other elected officials. It also goes to the New York City Planning Board. We've we've made this website so great that it goes to everybody at the same time. We've gotten calls from the New York City Planning Board, right, Mary Jane, telling us to please stop sending them emails because they're tired of getting our emails. Well, we want them to get another 2,000 emails. So keep sending them in. And if you signed it and your kids didn't sign it, call your kids, sign the petition because we need as much as we can. We're going to present the, the council. We're going to present the city planning. We're going to present everyone with the stacks and stacks of petitions. What do you think we got in signatures? We got a lot. We, we got, got a lot. lot. No, Let's say we got, say we got anywhere from 7,000 to 10,000 signatures. We're going we're gonna to present those signatures to them. But when you go to the website, stopupzoning.com, you're also going to be able to make a donation. Um, those, so let me explain what's going on with the money. Because a lot of people are curious. How much did we raise? How much do we need? Will it ever stop? So this is, this is a big challenge for us. We know this is probably the biggest challenge we've had in a long, long time. But will this be the last challenge we have? No. So right now, we have uh, we have an attorney. The attorney's projected it's going to be between twenty-five dollars and $35,000 to fight this challenge. So, so far we've raised $33,000. We've spent about $3,000 because we need things like this. We have to give the, the, the attorney a retainer, a deposit, and you know, we still need to continue to raise more money because we still need to finish paying this attorney. And if it drags out, it's going to cost us probably a lot more than we're even anticipating. So we continue to need support. This is a 501c3. Any of your donations are going to be tax deductible. If you didn't know it, the IRS changed the law that you can donate up to $300 per person at the end of the year, deduct it, even if you don't itemize. So for people, man, for people right. with no itemization, you can be deducted. All right. So keep that in mind. Uh, I know that I know that uh, you guys are, are might be getting a little weary coming out to these things, but please don't give up. Uh, we love you. Do not give up. I want to see your faces at every event that we have. I need to see your faces. I I want you to drag one of your neighbors with you May 19th. All right, let's show them that we can get at least 1,000 people at the main 19th. And we gotta, we, I want you guys, if you 
go to the website, all the phone numbers are there for every politician. But I want you guys to call all the politicians. Now, Marjorie Glassman's phone number is 718-931-1721. If you guys want this, I'll give it to you before you leave. 718-931-1721. Call her up tomorrow. And if she, if there's an answer machine, call her again, call her again, call her again, until you get her. Uh, the, the meeting on May 19th is going to be at the uh, Greek American Institute at 3573 Bruckner Boulevard. What time? Starts at 7? 7 o'clock. Be there by 7. You can be there earlier than 7 to sign up to speak. You want to register the board. You want to register to speak. Get there early. What's the number, John? 718-931-1721. Now, Assemblyman Benedetto has put his support behind us. What's important about Assemblyman Benedetto is that there is a piece of property. If you guys know where the garden center is, where it used to be, behind the garden center, there's a piece of land that belongs to the state. That land, Assemblyman Benedetto said similar to what George just said, that over his dead body would he let the developers get it. So, but, but, there could be some type of swapping of property. So, we need you to make sure you call his office too and tell him, I appreciate your support, but please keep giving it to us. All right? So, Assemblyman Benedetto, what's his phone number? 718-892-2235. 718-892-2235. And I'll give you these numbers if you want. Alright? So it's for Alright. If you guys have any questions, you want to take questions? Okay, George is going to take it over again. Sorry for yelling. We got airplanes. Can we get them to the next? The thing is, we, we heard, we, you heard how we could be so. No. No. Does anyone, do you know what that is? Does anyone know what that is? Does anyone not know what it is? Council person deference. Right? That means this, simply. Her voting no. Her voting no is not enough. Not enough. See, what you have to know the city council had a big turnover with the last election. They really did. A lot of freshman council members. Okay? They have what is known as a progressive coalition. A coalition within the city council that identifies themselves as progressive. All, not all, but a lot of them are endorsed by a group called Open New York which supports a lot of upzoning. So, by the council person or council member voting no, and the rest of the council goes against her, she can hide behind her no vote. She can say, hey, I voted no. The rest of my colleagues didn't vote that way. It's not my fault. Well, let me tell you something. That is a load of BS. Because that is just a cover to hide. This is the deal. Our council member, a freshman council member, you got to remember this, freshman council member, first year in office, is on seven committees. That is a lot of committees. A lot. Now you can look at this a couple of different ways. The one way you can look at it is, hey, you know what? She's getting to create a network, creating relationships that can enable her to get deaf. That's how you can look at it. John. Another way to look at it is like, I'm on all these committees. I haven't been seen in my uh, low-density neighborhoods for a while. That's another way to look at it. So the bottom line is, deference is important, and that means she has to get the support of a fellow council member. And a Facebook post on her webpage is not enough. Because somebody posts... Marjorie Velasquez votes no, it's on, she's against the upzone, it's on her Facebook page. That is not enough. You need a written statement opposing this upzone on council letterhead. It's got to go to the community board. It's got to go to city plan. It's got to go a lot of places. The mayor, the borough president, it's got to go a lot of places.
It's got to be an official statement. It's even got to go to the Speaker of the Council, Adams. It's got to go to a lot of places on official stationery that I have deference and we are opposing this upsell. The bottom line, if that don't happen, it's like nothing happened. The bottom line is, I oppose this. I told you I oppose this. Tell me what you want. You know what we want? For you to get deference. That's what we want. You know what we want? For you to de make this develop within the current code. That's what we want. We're not urban planners. We don't have to come to you and tell you, we want this here, we want that there. That's your goddamn job, not our job. So enough of this nonsense about what we want. We're tired of playing this footsie with you. Do your job. You know what the community wants. Right. End the story. Hey guys, I want to tell you, last night I went to a community board meeting and I was just a public observer there. Like like a couple other people with cameras taking video there. I wasn't taking video because, you know, I was just trying to learn. But let me tell you what I learned, which is scary as hell. Scary as hell. If you guys were there, you would agree with me. There's a, there's a building going up on the corner of Glebe and Westchester Avenue. There was the developer from the building going up on Glebe and Westchester Avenue. The community board invited them as their guests. That's what they called them, their guests. They asked them questions. They said, how many parking spaces are you gonna have? We think, we think 56. <laughs> how many, uh, do you, are you gonna have green land? Yeah, pretty sure. Uh, how many stories gonna be? We think eight or nine. You know, like all the things, all the thought. And I know, I know he's gonna clip this and he's gonna show that he thinks that I'm exaggerating it. But I'm not, because this is what was taking place. Thank you. The guy who was Thank the developer you. did not have Thank the answers. You. He did not have the answers. And guess what the community board said? Thank you for coming. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to build this building. You know why he's going to build this building? With the blessing of the community? Because it's as of right. Now, if Food Town gets, this, gets their way, Everything around them is going to become as of right, which means that one of your neighbors could become a building because that property can be as of right, and they will not need to get permission anymore. No more of this fighting an upzone. We can't fight. You can't fight when it's as of right. You just can't fight. So it's scary to think that once this passes, other developers are going to be salivating. They're going to be salivating to get our properties. Our property values drop. They come in and steal them for pennies on the dollar. And the whole community becomes building after building after building. The schools are going to be crushed more. You know the story. I don't have to say it again. But my point is that had you been there last night, you would have been shocked to see how the developer didn't have the answers. He has video of it. So why don't you show the video on your blog? Show the video of how the guy, news, the guy, guy was going. That. The, the guy was going. Uh, I think. I'm not sure. He was you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. So keep being lazy and keep shopping at Food Town. So. Go ahead. That's the point. Is that keep being hypocrites, passes, everybody here. You got You got to understand. We're not here to scare the hell out of people. We're not here to. We're not here to fear monger. We're not here to scare you. We're here to tell you the truth. This is the truth. No matter what these two video camera people want to report on us, we're telling you the truth. All right. So please take the information we're giving you. Spread it to your neighbors that could not make it today. This is how important it is. And we'll keep on spreading the word, we'll keep on having events, but we, we need everybody from the community to do their part too. All right? Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. George, you have to take it up. Uh, if anybody has any questions, we'll be more than happy to take them. I know one young lady over had a question about Furry Point Park or something. Is she here? What is, what is your... Well, I mean, the bottom line is, I mean, we don't know what the future holds, but I mean, if you look at, if you look at waterfront property and certain things there, 
I mean, I can make it a hypothesis, and I would say that that shelter is probably going to go. The one that, that, that used to be the hotel. I would think, I mean, that's logical. I mean, I, nobody knows. There's no plans right now. That so, right now, it's just, that's just conjecture. we got to focus on what is, not what is. I mean, what is is what's important. All right, so we got to focus on what is now. I mean, the future's not going to be on George. Anybody else? Any questions? Yeah, go ahead. All right, this, Mary Jane has a little announcement to make you guys. Mary Jane Michano from so, Ladies Waterbury and gentlemen, you heard tonight from George and from other people how important it is that we keep on speaking to Marjorie Velasquez, our new council person. Um, we've done it through petitions, we've done it through letters, we've done it through meetings. And we have asked her to be our guest speaker at the Waterbury LaSalle Community Association meeting. We meet every um, Can we fourth. Go to house? Pardon? Can we go to her house? Well, I don't know, but you can. I'm inviting you all and your neighbors to come to our meeting. That would be an opportunity for you to say all of the things that you're hearing tonight. Tell her that you we need her support. Tell her that she's a part of the community. I don't say, you know, be, be respectful, because we're all respectful, but be firm and tell her that deference is very important. She has said, I have to say that at our last meeting, she did say that she supports the community. But as everybody's saying, it's not enough for just her to support. She has to have deference because it's, you know, it's an easy out to say, okay, I'm going to vote no, but all my colleagues are going to vote yes, and then we're sung. I don't think she's going to do that because, as everybody said, it means her job. And I think that she will support the community. She lives here, but we all have to come out. We have to come out with as many people as possible. April 19th is crucial. You know, everybody has to be May 19th. Right, May 19th is crucial. This, our meeting is at the, the um, Lutheran Church on the corner of, right, of, of Hobart and um, Baisley, Hollywood, that area. It's at 7.30 um, in in the hall underneath. You go down the stairs. So it's, it's the 24th. No, the, the 24th. Our meeting is the 24th. It's May 24th, Tuesday at 7.30. So come. Bring your neighbors, speak to Marjorie, and tell her that we need her support and we need her to invoke difference. You know, and the other thing I want to say is just quickly, I I have never seen this community come out the way it has. And one of the reasons why we are going to be successful, and I really believe that we are, is because we are united, like we have never united before. And don't think that that's not noticed. She has noticed it. Every politician has noticed it, and when we go to speak to them, they say, I don't know what you guys are doing, but you are united. And when people unite, there's power in numbers, and we have the numbers. So let's continue, okay? And thank you. Thank you for the support. I mean, the thing is this, I mean, closing, I mean, one thing we know is this. We know how to defeat it, and that's through deference. And the theme's got to be right now, hey, it's lose-lose. We lose, you lose. You may live in the community, but if we lose, you won't be working in the community. That's how it works. That's how it has to be. I mean, I really don't like to be like this, but, you know, we're, our hand is being forced here. And the bottom line is we, we can't sugarcoat things anymore. Yeah, you, know, you have a situation here, and if you look, you have a bunch of guys that really were indifferent to our community. They treated our community like garbage. They let those properties get overgrown. They let them deteriorate. And now all of a sudden, because of a letter to city planning, they're going to make a fortune because they were indifferent to our community. I mean, that's, that's just not right. That's not right at any level. I mean, but the bottom line is, in order to beat this, we know who has the magic wand. The magic wand is held by our councilwoman. If she don't wave the magic wand with her colleagues, we lose, 
And if we lose, the message got to be, she loses. End of story. Simple message. We lose, you lose. That's it. This, this is business, nothing personal. That's how we got to look at it. Nothing personal is business. We lose, you lose. We may like you, but if you don't do the right thing, I guess like they say, you're fired. That's how it works. All right, thank you for coming, everybody. You have a great night. Don't forget your 19th.